tax laws are always changing. And in 2025, we are going to see some major changes that you need to prepare for. Are taxes going up? Will popular deductions disappear? I've got this all covered. We're diving into the sunset provisions, what history tells us, and how smart planning can protect you financially in the future. My name is Jerry Massasak. I'm part of the W.A. Smith financial team, and I've been a CPA for 30 plus years. So let's start by looking at what history tells us on these expiring tax relief measures. So the moral of the story is we really need to understand what's on the table. It's impossible to predict the future. Most recently, the Bush tax cuts that were set to expire, and this is back in 2010, some of them, the can was kicked down the road. Some of them were made permanent. Some of them were set to expire. The problem is we don't know which ones are going to be which. And that's where having a proper plan today will add to your financial strength tomorrow. So the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017 has some sunset provisions that are set to expire after tax year 2025. So effective tax year 2026 is when these would go into effect. These expiration provisions will impact everybody across the board. I don't care what income level that you're at, they're going to impact you. The first ones I'm going to start with are the individual provisions that are set to expire. So I've got nine of these that I want to share. There's going to be a change from your tax rates. Your tax rates right now, we're in a low tax rate environment. If you look at 2024 compared to 2017, 2024 tax rate is 12%. It will change to 15%. 22% will become 25%. Tax rate, 24% becomes 28%, and so on and so forth. So what does this mean to everybody? We're going to raise tax rates, which means everybody's going to pay more in taxes. Okay, super important that you're aware of this, that you're proactively planning for it. Number two, standard deduction. So what is the standard deduction? Simply, it's what everybody gets, no matter what deductions you have on the table. So whether you're itemizing or not, totally irrelevant. Standard deduction is what everybody gets. So if you're a joint filer, back in 2017, you would have got a $12,700 standard deduction deduction. 2024, it's $29,200. So more than doubled. So what would this mean if this provision is, set, is allowed to expire? Quite honestly, your taxable income's going up because your standard deduction's going down. So negative impact, pay more taxes, bottom line. Need to be paying attention to that. Uh, next few that I want to share with you uh, are related to itemized deductions. So this would be what are itemized deductions, right? They are what you get. It's on Schedule A, and it would have to outweigh the standard deduction. So you would want to itemize your deductions when you are greater than your standard deduction. What are itemized deductions? Medical expenses, taxes, mortgage interest, charity and then they used to have something called miscellaneous itemized deductions, which don't exist anymore. So uh, what changed in the, in the uh, Tax Cuts and Jobs Act? So the state and local tax, that's called SALT, the, was limited to $10,000. So no matter what you paid in taxes, could be $50,000, could be $100,000, was irrelevant. You got a $10,000 deduction, okay? Mortgage interest used to be unlimited. They limited it now from unlimited to $750,000. So for instance, you have a million dollar mortgage. 750 is your maximum amount of indebtedness. You only get 75% of that. Okay. The other one is miscellaneous itemized deductions basically got removed out of the, out of the code with the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. What are miscellaneous itemized deductions? 
You've got tax preparation. You've got investment advisory. You've got one that's pretty big that pro- this probably has a positive potential positive impact would be your unreimbursed business expenses. But you need to be aware of that so you know what you need to be keeping track of. What are those? Those are expenses when you're on a W-2. So you have an employer that doesn't reimburse you for mileage or for your phone or for your computer or for using your house as your business hub. So those are things that you definitely want to be paying attention to because this would be a potential opportunity now to maybe raise up your itemized deductions, lower your income, and pay less tax. All right. Credits. Big credit that changed in the Tax Cuts and Job Act was a child tax credit. If you had a child that was under 17, you used to get $1,000. 2017, you got a $1,000 tax credit. The act changed it to 2000 So you got a $1,000 raise in essence. So if this is expires, okay, and what's a credit? A credit's a dollar for dollar reduction in your income tax. So literally dollar of tax, dollar of credit equals no income tax, okay? So this went from 1000 to 2000 Again, negative impact will cost you money in taxes. Another one I want to share is the estate tax exemption. It went from 5.6 million and it moved up to over 13 million now. What is estate tax? Estate tax is really an asset based tax. So, somebody, if you're in the boat of having 5.6 million, you need to pay attention to this. You need to be aware of this and you need to know that there's some strategies that can be utilized in order to maybe reduce your estate and, and make sure you stay under that tax exemption. Now, next one I want to share, if you make $600,000 as an individual or $1.2 million as a joint filer, it's AMT. Most people haven't had to worry about this, but if you're in that boat, you need to pay attention. And if you're under that now, you could be subject to AMT. So this could have an impact. And what's AMT? It's called Alternative Minimum Tax. It's almost a tax embedded in our tax code that disallows certain exemptions and it almost creates a flat tax, okay? So if you're not aware of this, it would be very easy for you all of a sudden to be subject to this AMT um, tax that's within our tax code right now. Last one I want to share with you here is the personal exemption, okay? Prior to the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, went into place. Every single person, including dependents that were on a tax return, got a $4,000 basically deduction um, for all intents and purposes. Well, that got written out with the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. This would be one that would be a positive and kind of works in conjunction with your standard deduction, in essence, and almost raises up your standard deduction. So um, again, This one has a positive impact if this is brought back onto the table. And again, it's another planning tool that allows you maybe to uh, control your income. Okay, so those are the individual provisions that you need to be aware of. Again, they have an impact across the board. I don't care if you're if you're making uh, 15,000 or you're making a million dollars. Okay, proactive planning. All right. Next thing I want to share the corporate tax provisions that are set to expire. Not as many of these, but super duper important. So if you're a business owner, you need to know know, what's happening on the corporate tax side of things. First one I want to share is the research and development. So if your business is eligible for the research and development expense, amortization, credit, it, it, you, you, you have to amortize it rather than directly write it off. So this is set to expire. This is actually a positive. This will allow a company to actually write maybe more of their research and development expenditures off than they can right now. Number two, and this is a big one, this is the full expensing of a capital investment. So what does that really mean? You buy a piece of machinery. You you make an improvement to your facilities. You had a 100% bonus depreciation is what they called it, which basically meant you could write the whole thing off. So it reduces your income. If it reduces your income, 
it reduces your tax most likely. The phase out of this has already started. So there's already, if there's a phasing out of this, you know, it's 80% to 60% to 40% to 0% ultimately. So again, another, a provision that that's set to expire and be gone, um, very negative impact in my opinion. It just changes the way that you can deduct things that, that would be considered capital expenditures where in the past you'd have to depreciate them. Next one is, there is something called Qualified Business Income Deduction. It's code section 199A. All right, what the heck is this? In essence, it's a 20% deduction for pass-through business income. So what does that mean? Pass-through business income, you need to be a S-corp, a partnership, a sole proprietor. This coming out of the code would have a major negative impact. In essence, right now, if somebody makes $100,000 through a flow-through business, right now, you'd only be taxed on 80% of it. This expires, you're taxed on 100% of it again. So huge negative impact, huge thing that you need to pay attention to, and you need to make sure that you've got this on your radar so that you know that your business structure is what your business structure is supposed to be. Last one, and this one really isn't a provision that's going to expire, but, but it's super important, corporate tax rate. Right now, it is permanent. It is 21%. What did it used to be? Top rate of 35%. So it came down a lot. The qualified business income deduction that we just covered a second ago, that was really put into place as an equalizer here, um, in my opinion, for pass-through businesses. Because corporate tax rates, when you think about that, it's really a C corporation. So it's your regular corporations. There's not as many of those um, as there used to be. But in essence, the 21% corporate tax rate maybe incentivizes that. It would be one of those planning opportunities that really when you're looking at your business structure, you need to be keen on and you need to be prepared for and you need to understand how you're getting taxed and how that business income is getting taxed. All right. So those are the, those are the corporate provisions that are set to expire. Next, I'm going to go into some planning opportunities. Some of the things that, that you should be discussing with your, with your most trusted advisor. And if you're not, you might be left holding the bag in 2026 when, with the fact that we don't know what's really going on. So I want to share a couple of these concepts with you. First one I want to dive into is on the estate planning. This this is really ties back into that that exemption going from 5.6 million to 13.6 million and how that how there are some things that you could be thinking about right now in anticipation. So you should be thinking about gifting, okay? You should be thinking about maybe a crat or a slat. And those really work well as it relates to the estate exclusion um, being reduced. I want to talk to you about timing of deductions, okay? Especially if you're a business owner, but even if you're not, okay? So an individual, this could have, this could be something with, I call it bunching. So if you're an itemized deduction, deduction person now, so remember, standard deduction got doubled. Most people aren't in the itemized deduction arena any longer. Well, if that standard deduction number comes back down to where it was, well, there's going to be more itemized deduction people. So there's something called bunching your deductions. How does that work? That, in essence, means you maybe prepay taxes. That might mean that you prefund a charity, potentially, maybe with a donor-advised fund as a solution. Business owners. Timing of deductions. If you think about where everything's at, you think about qualified business income deduction, you think about the bonus depreciation provisions, you think about those things that are, that are expiring or phasing out now. Well, when should you buy that vehicle? When should you buy that piece of machinery? That's the timing of deduction. That's having the pulse of where tax rates are. If you're a flow through business, especially you know, we talked about the tax rates going up. Well, this is where maybe it makes sense to push that machinery into another year. I don't know. Again, something that you need to be uh, in consideration of. Third thing, corporate structure. You know, 
how are you structured as a business? Are you a C corp? Are you an S corp? Are you a partnership? Are you a sole proprietor? You know, LLC, what have you, you know, make sure you understand qualified business income deduction. There are a lot of considerations as it relates to corporate structure in terms of that concept. Well, that, that, that qualified business income deduction set to expire. Okay. So does that change the narrative? Does that change maybe the game plan in terms of how you should be structured as a business owner? You know, we always look at how do you pay yourself? So uh, an owner of a business, what's the most tax efficient way that you can pay yourself? Again, corporate structure should be getting looked at now in anticipation of some changes coming forward here. Number four, capital gains tax rates. Right now, you could be in a 0% capital gain tax rates, long-term capital gain tax rates, if you're in the 12% bracket. Is that going to go away? There are, ta there are talks of it going away. Capital gain tax, you need to be aware of what your, what your taxes are today and what they're going to be coming forward. Again, long-term capital gain tax rates. Number five, Roth conversions. This is a big one. Right now, we're in a low, what I will call a low tax environment. 30 years, it's about as low tax environment as I've ever seen. There are conversion strategies using these low brackets and potentially maybe piggybacking off of other types of uh, strategies like maybe a donor advised fund, maybe a QCD, okay? Roth conversions, if you're not considering those, I think you're missing the boat, okay? You really need to be looking at Roth conversions. Number six, harvesting capital losses. This kind of works in conjunction with capital gains taxes. Again, it's a matter of the concept is this. In essence, you sell something at a loss to offset a gain someplace else and create a zero tax, or maybe enough that you create a 12% bracket and you pay 0% on your long-term capital gains. Again, a lot of horsepower here in terms of what's on the table today that might change coming forward. Number seven, health savings account. Another one, in my opinion, underutilized. There's a contribution strategy. There's a usage strategy. These are all things that should be getting discussed if you're eligible for a health savings account, if it makes sense for you, and how you're going to use that within your financial plan. Charitable giving. Okay, big one. This is itemized deduction for the most part. Again, we kind of touched on it earlier, timing of deduction, donor advice fund usage. This is where maybe you can use a bunching strategy, okay? QCDs, um, that's qualified charitable distribution, or just straight old giving to a 501c3. When do you do it to maximize the deduction opportunity? Now, listen, charitable giving, you're either charitable or you're not. It's not a credit. This is a deduction. You need to fall within those confines in order for this to make sense. Okay. And the last one that you really should be thinking about, retirement contributions. Whether you're an employer and, and, and you own a business or you're an employee and you're participating in a retirement plan, you should be looking at, as an employer, what kind of a plan okay, to maximize Look at the tax rate environment. Maybe it's low now. Maybe it's a Roth opportunity. Maybe in 2026, it reverts back to the old deferral that we've come grown to be used to. If you're an employee and you have a W-2, have you considered a Roth if it's available as a 401k? Because that's a provision that's written into most 401k plans. Based on our low tax environment, tax rate environment, plus depending on your age, these are strategies that you should be thinking about. These are things that you should be utilizing, okay, and planning for. Again, if you have a plan, it gives you an opportunity to shift on the run. We talked in the beginning. We don't know, we don't know how things are going to change. We don't know if it's going to kick the can down the road. Is it going to expire and be gone? Is it going to be made permanent? We don't know. Having a plan okay, and planning for these things that we talked about gives you an opportunity to maximize your wealth and maximize your financial opportunities.
Now, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If not, hope to see you the next time.